Okay, so here are a bunch of mineral products which we're going to cover. Firstly, this is sulfur, which usually they get it from a rock and powderize it. Now, sulfur is in a category which I would call uh, rare, I mean, not rare, uh, raw mineral products. Dirt, sulfur, clay, anything that you can find readily from the earth is kind of like that. Admittedly, sulfur is kind of a crystal, so, you know, it's got, it's in multiple categories. The next one, here I have this rock of iron. I believe it's iron, some kind of iron. Um, the You can tell because it, it goes kind of that orangey color. Now, raw minerals are in a higher category than kind of lower earth things like dirt and clay. You can think that um, the, the ore of metals, you know, uh, various different ores are, yeah, they're higher level. And then the next level is metal. Um, metal, this is lead metal. You can buy it online, you can get it easy. A uh, bunch of lead. Now we actually have a bunch of other metal here. See, this is a plate of iron, which I used to, um, as an electrical ground for welding. But, um, you can see that from this rock, is made into this plate of metal. How they do that is, uh, we'll go into that in lecture format. One of the things that relate to it is an oxide. And I see this powder here. This is an oxide, which is kind of like the ash of metal. So uh, this is kind of halfway in between. Yeah, actually I use iron, that might be a bit easier. This is, the oxide is halfway in between the rock and the, um, the metal so it's kind of like a half step or it's yeah so then the metal is its own category as well this would be the third category so first is like dirt um or metal fourth category is crystal now this one is quite nice you see it sparkles it looks like the night sky i thought these were lovely i don't know if they're natural or artificial um, these are crystals. This is also a crystal. This is so, uh, um, uh, copper sulfate. You can use it as fertilizer and other things, I believe. I'm not sure. Uh, though admittedly, maybe you want a different, more organic form of fertilizer, as we might discuss. This is powder of a crystal, a zerite. So a zerite is like a blue kind of milky crystal and as you see as you, as you powderize most crystals they turn into a gray kind of dust uh, some of them turn into different forms now number four is crystals crystals are like the refined glasses they actually another word they call it is glass they're refined substances of metals and ore as well uh, fifth is kind of like a, a meta category I don't know maybe you say that this is salt, ormus. It's like a refined product from salt. Personally, I'm not much of an ormus head. You know, I don't really, I don't think it's all that great, to be honest. But I thought I'd include it just as a kind of like extra category. Anyway. All right, so let's go over the theory on a whiteboard. So currently we have here minerals. Now you have your four main classes of minerals which are first your earths. This is mostly the stuff, if we, for example, have the earth here, on top you're going to have soil, and um, you're also going to have sand. So this is all the kind of stuff on the top. Next layer you're going to have clay, which is also an earth, and then you're going to have rock, and then you're going to have mineral and also crystal. Now sometimes minerals and crystals and rocks can be a little bit higher, sometimes they're lower. It's um, The earth is not just a simplified diagram like what I'm drawing, but it's, you know, it's got its own little nuances. But mostly the things more from here, clay, soil, um, I showed sulfur, sulfur it, 
can be produced lower, but usually if you look at a sulfur lake and sulfur kind of um, place, like a sand field or a sulfur field, there's all kinds of natural, um, there's cell ammoniac fields, there's you know, uh, various carbon, like calcium carbonate fields and such, so they can kind of be related to herbs or like in between them. Next we have ores, things like iron, so these are rocks and minerals, or around here, so a deeper mineral layer. This is the stuff that you make into metal, primarily. <clears throat> Next is metal, so you see this is a more refined or a, a lower version, if you think, but our metal, of course, is, it's, uh, is technically a more artificial uh, creation. Um, I'm sure there's probably, you know, if you look at certain crystal, certain minerals and crystals, you can see little bits of metal and all that. But um, this is more talking about refined bar or metal that you, you, know, you take ore, you first calcin, uh, calcine it, which is like you take iron ore, you burn it with um, you know, in a wood fire in open air, and then you take that that um, oxide, like the red oxide, crush it up. And um, you mix it in with, with uh, charcoal in like a, a non-oxygenated heating vessel and you can get you know, a certain kind of metal. Of course there's many other kinds of uh, ways to make metal but that's just the old school way. Next is glasses or crystals, ruby, jade, etc. Um, which are made from minerals like ores. I believe when they mix with hot fumes of things like sulfuric fumes, sulfur, um, oh, what else we got? There's um, like fluoride, fluorine, I think, fumes, fluorine, all kinds of um, different um, vapors, mineral vapors. I believe they over time mix with the ores and form. Um, glasses and such, which are the refined kinds, so you'll have to look that up a bit more if you're interested in that. Here are a few uh, alchemically refined or experimented mineral products. Most of these we're going to make or I will show you how to make and, and talk about them. First one here, of course I love this colour, um, very nice blue, you see those, all that crystal formation on the side. And in the middle, I have all of these rings. See, these are copper rings, and they've been eaten away. And the liquid in here is a vinegar plus hydrogen peroxide, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And there seems to be some kind of... Oh, it looks, looks like, look at that on the side. It's almost like it's um, returning back into copper, if you can see all those little dots. That's very interesting. Anyway, I've kind of just left this to... Um, do its thing and uh, just left as an experiment so that's turning metal into its liquid crystal form and this is an organic form because it's an acetate next one is lead now this is the exact same thing but i figure i show you a different mineral see all different minerals have their own different colors and there's a little piece of lead there as you can see and lead's more flaky you see, this water is mostly clear, but it's just flaky pieces of lead acetate, while the copper is like is like a blue, blue ocean. Uh, different minerals have different properties. For example, silver, even though if you get it to a um, alkaline form, it actually is quite volatile. Or maybe it was just the silver I had. I don't know. <laughs> Now this is a failed experiment. I tried to calcine antimony, which is a commonly used alchemical substance. And you see that, that liquid's pretty clear. It's maybe just a little bit unclear because of the powder. It's not because it's actually dissolved. And you see this antimony at the bottom. This is the same thing. Vinegar and hydrogen peroxide and did not dissolve it. So different minerals will be um, dissolved into their liquid form, which is what we want to do to make them into an alchemical substance by different chemicals and processes and antimony does not does not work with this. I'll explain in a video 
um, a lecture coming up that'll be you know right after this to explain what minerals can be processed and etc etc anyway this kind of disgusting looking thing here I know but it keeps it airtight <laughs> um, is actually fermented metal now you see that that white kind of thing if anyone's brewed kombucha you know what a scoby is or if anyone's left a this a um brewer run too long you know that it builds up a fermentation thing on the top now you might be able to see it a little bit uh kind of there's not really too much of a layer metal fermentation is a little bit weird but look at that <sighs> you know, i fell look at that color and you see it down the bottom that is the um yeast combined with uh i think it's a metal Kind of like acetate combined with i think hydroxides from electrolysis which is one process that i will be showing you but you see how blood red that is that is pure iron tincture that you could then further refine into a iron tincture now i just keep this as an experiment um <laughs> educational piece but um yeah so metal fermentation is real as you can see and i'll show you how to do it now a metal if left out in the atmosphere, as you see with this, it will eventually rust. Different metals rust at different speeds and in different environments. Now this bottle here is a mixture of vinegar, um, alcohol, it's yellow because of the type of alcohol, um, and I think that was it actually. And there's some copper wire. Now I hope you can see this copper wire has rusted in there now that's after about a year and a half i've kept to see how long it would take to rust and it's only starting now so you could kind of think if this was in the ocean uh, like a wire it would take you know potentially hundreds if not several thousands of years to fully disintegrate uh, maybe the saltwater ocean actually does it, you know, makes it disintegrate more. I'm not sure. I have to test that actually. Um, but this is this alcohol, vinegar, and water. It's pretty watered out. It's mostly only like five percent alcohol and five percent vinegar, I'd say. But um, yeah, you can kind of see that um, this is an alchemical process of slowly over many, many years. Uh, transformation within metal within you know earthly substances happens and this actually relates to the generation of um, crystals and, and minerals and such okay next is chemical forms crude ore you can think is its own you know its own form if you oxidize meaning you burn usually a powder or burn the ore in open air at a high heat you f form an oxide which is ash of metal you can think so you've taken away some kind of uh, volatile components from it you've refined it down next is the metallic form metal metallic metallic form and then is the crystalline form now this would be acetates which is an organic form um, this is sulfides this is uh, chlorides and these are related to the glass now of course we're more looking at artificially created crystals because they work better um, naturally made glasses are a bit different than uh, chemical crystals and natural glasses are more like glass chemical crystals are more like um, like oily crystals I guess you could think of something like that where you can still mix them into water usually with glasses you can't okay metal calcining now i have a little bit of iron here now this is kind of iron shards combined with it's a little bit oxidized already as you see it's kind of brown but um you can use most metals regular metals and uh turn up the heat and you simply just let it sit and it'll calcine if you look at the edge there, oh look at that, you know, no. it's starting to calcine, you can see that. Alright, 
if you look at that, it is all, it's basically all calcined. Some of the stuff on the top isn't, but yeah. For the sake of the video, uh, look at that. The difference in color, it's now, it's like a black kind of, a black iron. And assumingly if we added vinegar to that, it would um, react. Now, will it actually react with the vinegar? Let's find out. I'm going to zoom in for this. Ah, shit. <laughs> Fuck. I should have known better. <laughs> Don't put um, liquids on, on hot things. But yes, it did work. Wait, let me get a spoon. One, one minute. Okay. I think it always things go wrong with the calcination dish. Anyway, um, if you take a look at that liquid, uh, yeah, of course it's not going to dissolve at all because vinegar is not a super strong solvent, but um, yeah, there you go, <laughs> there you go, it's, uh, and you don't want to put this stuff down the drain, it's, uh, yeah, it kind of can rust your uh, sink, so um, if you use, you know, strong chemicals, you want to kind of mix with a lot of lo liquid, or you, um, negate with you know alkali this stuff i'm just going to put it on the, the yard because it'll take it as fertilizer now third is chemical pathways this is essentially the pathway of which something is turned into a um into its more refined forms it's a oil or sulfur form in um, alchemy which first you have metal or ore it is then calcined or if it's a metal you can electrolyze it which is when you have the two pieces of metal water and the positive and negative and the negative um, you could just use a carbon rod so water, right? and um, the positive starts to gather all this fuzz um, which is then I think it's actually hydroxide, so we can do oxides, hydroxide, and if you think oxide is in ox hydroxide, hydrogen, you know, water and oxide, um, it's it's just two different forms of um, the same similar thing. At least when you're working with a chemical, it's um, you know, it's fairly similar. Now these are both mineral metallic mineral or this is metallic because these are both mineral components or inorganic in organic and these two here are the organic form which is what we want now specifically we want an acetate but you can also use a chloride um, you can use a nitrate you can use a phosphate, etc., a sulfate, a fluor, uh, fluor, I don't know if it's a fluorate. I don't recommend you mess with chlorides, nitrates, sulfates, etc. Only use acetates. Um, only use those because acetate is an organic form. The chloride and the sulfate, technically, it's not an organic form. Because it's still, you know, it's still technically a mineral crystal form, um, so you don't want to, you don't want to kind of mess with that. There are ways to turn, just say, a chloride, like an iron chloride, into an iron acetate. I believe it's done through turning the iron chloride into a hydroxide by adding like sodium hydroxide, or you could use sodium carbonate. The carbonate's going to be weaker and it's going to be harder to do. So you change the pH from acidic, it's probably like a two, and you change it to about a ten. And then I think from the carbonate, the iron carbonate or hydroxide form, you then add vinegar to make an acetate. I've um, acetate. I've done a bit of that, but I didn't include it in this video because I haven't gotten it to a proper working form. So once I do. You know, I'll show it to a um, video for so just, yeah, I, I would only, um, right. I would only do these things with, um, for experimental purposes. Of course, you know, take good precautions in using acids, um, but I wouldn't use them for, you know, palatable purposes. Anyway, transform the acetate to a tincture. 
is done by washing it in water, so that's just adding water and then um, uh, then drying it out again. You can dry it in the oven, you can just leave it to dry naturally. they are putting it in a jar and they're putting it in a tiny bit of water, mixing it, putting it in a jar and then putting it in a dark, in a warmish location. Um, then once you have something that doesn't smell like vinegar and acetate, which doesn't smell, you add uh, the alcohol. There's actually a secondary process if you can get lots of acetate crystals, like a, like a handful of them, you can um, dry distill them. Now again, I have not perfected that method, I haven't been able to get it working yet, but again, once I do figure it out, I'll show it. Um, that's another method, if you look up that in old alchemical texts, there's some people that teach it, you can find it. And then finally we have the tincture. Now ultimately, we're essentially taking the mineral from the, the oxide, which is the salt, so alchemical salt, and then we're turning it, um, it's, fun, it's kind of interesting because salt, they say, you're made out of earth and the water element, the earth and water element, hydroxide is like it. Water earth. But anyway, then you're turning that with the, the mercury, which is the, the mineral acids, the acetate. Mercury is just a liquid that extracts and pools um, into a sulfur, which is oil, which is the acetate crystals. Well, basically, it's the oil of the crystals, because if you dry distill it, you're dry distilling the oil of the acetate crystals. And then you're using another um, quote unquote you know, vegetable mercury, which is alcohol to tincture it, to then you know, make a, a um, alchemical tincture. Now, the first thing for electrolysis is that we need water. Regular tap water works fine, distilled water is better for more scientific experiments. Next thing, you can use either vinegar. Or salt and these are your electrolytes um, I believe you get a different end result I think with vinegar you get a more acetate though of course the acids not going to dissolve everything with vinegar I mean with salt you get a more um, hydroxide I believe which is more like an ash a mineral ash you can think which you then later dissolve with vinegar all right that's some salt don't add too much, but you know, just to make it nice, so it tastes kind of salty. There we go. And of course we get our trusty kitchen chopstick. Don't underestimate the value of a chopstick in a alchemical experiments to mix it up, taste it up. Uh, it could be a little bit salty. And do remember, all of the salt will be in the end result unless you dry distill it. So don't want to add too much salt. Um, it's gonna you know, taste salty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You almost have a, an intuition where you can feel like, will this be electrical? Salt, they say it conducts um, electricity. Yeah. Tastes salty now. Okay, that'll work. Here we have the salt water and a DC generator which produces DC power. Now we have a positive here and a negative here. The positive is hooked up to this plate of iron. You can see it's already been a little bit, you know, a little bit worn. Okay, now I'm gonna put this in and I'm gonna have to tape it. Oops, I'm gonna have to tape it because otherwise it'll, f oh wait, nope, it's fine. Okay, no it isn't. Um, Cause you know, I don't want my electrode to get in. So I'm gonna tape that in a minute. And I've got in the negative, I've got this connected to a wire of copper, which is just going to go in like that. Now, you don't want them to touch. See, they're not touching. Because um, otherwise it shorts it out. Now, I don't remember which is the cathode and, elect and anode. I think negative is the anode, but we'll find out. Basically, um, one of them is going to give its chemical properties and the other acts as a ground you can actually use a carbon rod for the for the i think it would be the negative but we're going to find out so basically either we're going to get copper or we're going to get iron i'm kind of hoping we get iron because it'll be easy to work with um as we'll see so but we're going to figure it out through this experiment 
All right, it's nice and taped up. Hopefully that holds. I've got some in the back and some in the front. So they're not touching. The, of course, the rubber is touching. That shouldn't really be an issue. I hope not. Um, and one of them's gonna act as a ground. Now I'm gonna turn this on. And I'm going to put it up to about I reckon, 20, 20 volts works well. You can use 10. Um, honestly, you can do this on batteries. You can just hook up a few. Oh, look at that. Hook up a few batteries. You see that bubbling? A little bit, a little bit out of focus. But um, look at that. That's already bubbling. Isn't that great? Wow. So maybe that is the one that's going to be giving off its own thing. Because one of them is going to be collected with fuzz. Um, with like an oxide, uh, with like a, I don't know if it's an oxide, a hydroxide, um, something like that. Because chemically, you've got water and you've got salts, uh, sodium chloride. And I think the and hydroxide is just water and air. Oh, it's moving. Oh, goodness me. Oh, I'm moving it. <laughs> water and air. Um... Hydroxide, well, you know, elementally, it's it's water, hi hydrogen and oxygen, I think. I forget the, the numbers of them. So I think because it's underwater um, that it does that. I, I don't remember, but I mean, look at that. Isn't that fascinating? I love I love watching that. So we're going to come back to this in about half an hour, and we're going to see which one is um, collected with lots of fuzz. And if it's a copper one, we're probably going to have to shift it over because I don't think we're going to have enough... Um, <laughs> Enough stuff. Actually, I will shift it over right now just to show you. So let me just put this down. Turn it off. <laughs> We've got to be safe. And uh, shift them over. One second. And turn it back on. Okay. So now I have shifted them. And you see the, the copper wire is no longer bubbling. Is the iron going to start bubbling? Yes, it is starting to bubble. Look at that. Isn't that fascinating? Just on the side. Now, because it's all rusty, it may be less electrically conductive. Just be careful about that with your own thing. Um, could also be because I have a smaller ground. I'm not quite sure. All right, so I've got my 500 milliliter beakers. Uh, it's boiling. Got these um, uh, flasks out, and I've also got this old experiment, which you see this yellow liquid that is hydrochloric acid, and inside of it is nephrite jade. So it hasn't fully digested the jade. So there are some um, minerals which cannot be digested by hydrochloric acid, assumingly. Uh, maybe with heat and time it could work, but it doesn't look like it because um, I've kept it out for a long time. So that's just a little experiment to show that some crystals uh, can be digested by acid. Similarly, some most minerals will be digested by, um, like, like ores, I mean, most ores will be digested by acids. Uh, admittedly, everything can be digested by acids, um, every mineral product, if you find the right acid. But, um, ideally, you know, we don't really want to be using, um, too many acids or, uh, anything like that, just because you need a bit more experience to that. But anyway, let's, uh, show the chemical process. Okay, so, here I have vinegar, double strength vinegar. And hydrogen peroxide uh, this is six percent and in this beaker of flask I have a couple nails now if you're making um, mineral products to be a mineral you know, if you're refining it into alchemical stuff to be eaten you want to use kind of raw um, the raw product a nails probably got different chemicals in it different minerals but um, you know, we're going to see how it goes. So you, you'd want just like raw iron for an iron tincture, for example. And I'm going to pour in um, equal parts, vinegar and equal parts, excuse me one second, uh, hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to go get a funnel. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with my funnel. Now, ideally, you want to do this outside or in a ventilated area. Uh, I'll take this outside later um, once it's all been... Um, yeah, you know, once once it's excuse me, once it's kind of done its thing, and let's see what happens. Just pour in a little bit of that, so not too much, maybe about uh, twenty mils. And pour in a little bit of this hydrogen peroxide now. Twenty mils, okay. Now is there any activity? Mm, yes, I think so. 
Okay, let me take a look. There looks to be some bubbling. Nothing else, you see. Alright, take a look at that. See how it's kind of misting up? Isn't that cool? It's like a ghost in there. Now, I was actually wrong. It turns out positive is the one that gives its chemical. See how that is slowly dripping powder? Look at that. Isn't that fascinating? Now, I'm going to switch them over. Again, so I'm just going to take that, take that. So it's negative is the ground. So you can use a, a carbon electrode for the ground if you want. Um, and you can use, I mean, you can use anything actually, any any metal that's you know, good, clean, etc. Uh, usually I'd, I'd clean this metal if I was actually making something drinkable. But because it's an experiment, we'll just let little things right along the top anyway because i want the iron because it'll be easy to work with um we're going to get the iron but isn't that fascinating that that mistral kind of thing that's all the little particles of copper some kind of copper ash so we'll let that go on now look at that see our iron is actually starting to dissolve a little bit you can see where the I'll try to get a bit of focus where the um nails are there's iron if we rattle it around we get a irony colored liquid now this is going to take a little while to do so i'm going to show you a speedier version now i don't recommend you do this it's more for experimental purposes um i've got some iron and a little bit of rust i'm going to put hydrochloric acid in now one thing to rem remind remember is never to do this in metal containers only in glass plastic can work as well uh, Pour a little bit in, like that, and let's watch it. Get a bit of, get a bit of view, and look at that. Look at those nails. So that's nails and rust, and you can see they're already starting to um, dissolve. Now, hydrochloric acid specifically can dissolve iron. Um, different acids, as I will explain, will dissolve different materials. And as you see, it's kind of becoming greeny-yellow. It's showing it a bit orangey on the camera, but it's very yellowy um, in person, so to speak. Look at that. Now we can also see how we can also see how this is starting to give off a orangey um, mist. It also gives off kind of like a black stuff. I think that's a carbon from the iron. So, um, very interesting. And we'll just keep letting this run until it's, you know, really colored. Okay, again, we can see an experiment here. It's dissolving quite a, lit, a lot. This is hydrochloric acid, and this was the um, vinegar plus uh, hydrogen peroxide. See, it's getting that nice red liquid, and if I left this for a while, it will it'll eventually um, turn into an iron, uh, the beginnings of an iron tincture. Now, because I'm a little late on time, I'm going to use a more pre-prepared one and show you how to convert it into an um, organic form. Alright, so I have this um, copper, which is just the hydrogen peroxide and... Um, and the vinegar, which with the little copper rings there, which I'm going to pour into this beaker, that means flask, and I'm going to heat it on the hot plate until it um, gets very, very kind of oily and thin. I don't want to burn it, so I don't want to do that, but I'm not sure. So you. here it is. I'm going to get it cooking. It's on a three. Um, three should be fine. It's it's goes up to five. One is pretty, is, is low, three is medium, and five is hot, really hot. This will get it up to kind of like a simmer or boil. And um, so that's what we want. We want it to, to dissolve down. All right, I've put the fan on because the gas, you don't breathe it in. And I put it down to about a two and a half. Uh, as you see, it's boiling. We want it kind of simmering uh, just because it will, I'll put it down to a two now. Yeah, it's a little bit too high right now, but I'll put it on simmer. Alright, I'll, I'll check back in another few minutes. As you can see, we don't have much left. Very small amount, so you've got to be careful when it's around this much. 
able to watch it so it doesn't burn. Okay, now now for fermenting the methyl, uh, which we electrolyzed, you're going to need sugar. This is raw sugar. I'm not sure if it'll work. Um, just get white sugar. That's probably the best. Brown and raw might work. I'm not sure. Uh, yeast. This is just bread yeast, which I use to make like uh, bread and all kinds of you know, stuff with. Add a, add a bit of that in. Is about a teaspoon of sugar and about a teaspoon of yeast. You can use other yeasts like brewing yeast. You know, it's all good as long as it causes fermentation. And we add some water in. And we mix this up. Give it about 10-5 minutes to, um, to kind of do its thing. And then we will add it into our electrolyzed mixture. Alright, so we've got our yeast and electrolyzed mixture. And as you see, it's collecting quite a bit more. Now this is basically the same as if you had used the acetate and hydrogen peroxide solution. Um, well actually no it isn't, excuse me, because once you turn the electrolysis off, all this stuff will go to the bottom and you just have water. So you have this powder, this mineral powder and water at the bottom and you can add vinegar to it to, um, to, um, what's it called, to, to basically dissolve it, which we're going to do. Right, so I'm back with the vinegar and what you do is you take your electrodes here, of course, oh, oops. That's right, I'll just grab him. Now again, as I said, you want to use kind of pure metal. This has got a lot of uh, uh, a lot of um, carbon in it, which we don't want. But it's just for an experiment, so it's fine. Pour some vinegar around that much should be good. And uh, oh, as we see, look at all that activity. See, so now the um, the metallic. Um, alkaline particles are reacting with the acid forming a um, more acidic solution now you want this ideally to be about pH neutral you can get it pH neutral just adding a little bit of vinegar should be fine um, about a, a few capfuls and um, then this has actually got too much I'm gonna I'm gonna remove a little bit of it just gonna put it in there uh, that'll be fine a little bit more. Don't worry, this uh, this actually it can act as a fertilizer. So um, oops, I used to use the copper. Copper is actually very good if you make it into the correct organic form. It acts as a fertilizer. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure if that's enough vinegar, but we'll see. And then we'll pour in the fermented mixture. And um, the idea is you want to uh, you see these little particles of carbon and such floating about. The idea is to dissolve. The, um, the metallic particles that we've gotten from electrolysis into the vinegar to make it kind of pH neutral or a little bit acidic that it won't kill the yeast then the, um, the metallic mixture is kind of partly liquid of course you're still going to have particles of um, stuff and uh, then eventually the yeast will uh, cause the fermentation now if you've done it all correct I don't know if I have, I think that might be a little bit too, um, yeah, you see all these little clumps, it might be a little bit too acidic, uh, but anyway, <laughs> that's how you do it, you're just going to have to use trial and error to get it correct, so that's basically if you want to test out the idea of fermenting metal as I showed earlier, yeah, I, I don't know if that's, <laughs> I don't know, um, I'll leave it and maybe come back to it in another video and we'll see. Alright, so, um, I don't know if the fermented metal bit works, uh, worked for that time, I'll check it later. Uh, I, the method that I did use to create the one that I showed earlier in the video, which did work, and I've tried it multiple times, was called the Day Wilson method, based off a person, alchemist named Day Wilson, who, um, I never got to see, I think it was a man, his original videos, but I saw some of the offshoots. So if you look up Day Wilson method and alchemy on YouTube, you may be able to find it. Uh, the method was essentially to electrolyze iron. So you have your two electrodes of iron for about two hours or so. Let it get all you know, good and irony. More than I, I put, I was a bit stre you know, stressed on time. And then while it's still electrolyzing, while it's still going on, you add a bit of vinegar to um, 
kind of neutralize it and turn it to so that it's like <clears throat> you know it's uh, dissolving a little bit and then you add the yeast of water sugar mixture to it and you mix it up this is all while it's still electrolyzing and then you continue it electrolyzing for another like hour or two I don't know why that works I thought it would not work you know you would assume it wouldn't I would assume the method I tried um, would be better but who knows so if you want to try that one it's simply just keep it electrolyzing and then about two hours in you add vinegar and then you add the yeast sugar mixture that could be the raw sugar as well I'm not sure and um, then you just keep electrolyzing again and then you turn it off you cap it you know, put some some plastic over it and then it'll um, start to ferment after you know, a few days so you can try that one out all as right well. back to this one they see it's kind of crystallized a little bit um, down the bottom now it's don't mind the brownness that's from iron from other experiments now what you want to do is you want to smell it and it smells a little bit vinegary so if it does you want to add a, a little bit of water um, maybe a few tablespoons and or 10 milliliters, 20 milliliters, and cook it down again. And you want to keep doing that until it doesn't smell vinegary. Now, because I'm just going to make this quickly and show you, I will you know, do the other steps. And once it's not vinegaryish, because what you're doing is you're taking the acetate and you're um, basically boiling it down here to a pure copper acetate or iron acetate or whatever. And then you take your alcohol and you add the alcohol to it, because that turns it into an organic form. The alcohol will um, dissolve the copper. I might need these little heat motions as works fine. And as we see, this sweetens it, and um, the idea is that it turns it into kind of like a like a um, what do you call it? Like an eth I don't know if it's chemically an ethyl form, but it turns it into a sweet form. That's basically drinkable. I might need to actually add water to that because it might be too high percentage or just more heat. But anyway, because we are just showing for example, I'll grab my little um, cup. Get out a bit. The alcohol percentage you want probably about 30, 50 to 70. Yeah, either one works. And there you go. The impure, because it's got little particles of everything. Uh, copper organic tincture now i'm going to take a take my um oof, mm, okay my finger and try it out and um yep now if it tastes terribly like metal um you've made a mistake <laughs> some things do taste terrible zinc is just pretty pretty not not so good um but this this is fine mm. Okay. Yeah, I can feel the effects. It's um kind of leaves a little bit of a astringent residue. That's just what you get with um this method. There are other methods which I'll, I'll teach in lecture format. But um yeah, if you use small amounts, it's you know, digestible. Of course, you don't want to be using lots of amounts. So you'd use like a milliliter or two. You know, a few little drops. Um. Mm. Okay, yeah, my, I can feel my head. My head, that's, that's nice. Let me get a little more. Oops, I need a little more of that. Mm, okay. Yeah, this can actually be used as antibacterial copper as well. So you can use, you can put it in a spray and use it as antibacterial spray. Um, mm, the alcohol is kind of burning me because this is 90%, but uh, yeah, besides that, it's... um. That is that. Alright, this is to explain what metals can be dissolved by what <clears throat> or how to um, refine them further. Most, as long as you have metallic form, will be, you'll be able to electrolyze them into their um, hydroxide form. Uh, hydrochloric, oh, it works with iron. I think it works with uh, aluminium as well. Aluminium. It should work with a few others. I honestly forget which ones. Vinegar plus hydrogen peroxide, which is usually my go-to, works with lead, copper, and iron. I think it works with tin. I'm not sure. I assume it would. And aquaregia works with gold, silver, and mercury. Now you see the lower chemicals seem to work with lower metals. Higher things, aquaregia is um, one pot, hydrochloric, 
uh, no, one parts nitric, three parts hydrochloric, I believe. So you mix them together and that's alkyl regia. So let's just look it up and that'll dissolve these three. I think mercury can just dissolve in nitric as well, maybe. I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, and vinegar, oh, some acetates, I mean some oxides. <laughs> And vinegar, if you mix it into certain oxides, will um, I know at least a copper, copper oxide. I think lead it works with, and I know iron. So if you're doing electrolysis, making the hydroxide, um, and some hydroxide, put them brackets. Vinegar and heat. Usually the alchemists would um, they would add vinegar to shavings that they would have left out in like the rain to to um to 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 oxidize um the rust essentially or they would calcine it and then they would add vinegar and they would keep that heated for about a month and um they would you know make a pound of like they would do a pound of that you know, a pound of metal shavings and yeah and that's how they would do it in the old school way of course now we have mineral uh, mineral acids and electricity implying they didn't have some form of electricity back then I think they probably did but uh yeah that's that's for some little uh, information otherwise you're just gonna have to figure it out for yourself it's a bit of a fun exploration and teaches you a lot about mineral chemistry final part is toxicology very interesting I mean very important part now toxic materials are metals mineral form metallics um, so you don't eat metal, <laughs> it's toxic. This means if you took iron shavings and you eat that, it's toxic. Um, and FYI, iron is just as toxic as lead. Lead is just as toxic as tin. Tin is just as toxic as silver. Um, you know, people try to scare you, you're saying, oh, lead and mercury is scary, scary. Or some other thing, it's like, nope. These things are all, they're all pretty much just the bad with each other. Not to say that, um, you know, you're going to die if you have it. Of course, uh, metal workers work with minerals all the time. Chemists work with minerals all the time. Miners, they breathe in all the dust. It's not lovely for you, but it's not going to kill you, of course. And just the same if you eat something. Uh, they used to put, they, well, actually, they still put metal in some cereals, fortify it with iron, thinking that it works, but it doesn't. Other things are toxic class of these. For example, cinnabar is a crystal, and you see crystals are in the semi-toxic form, which means you can eat them, but they'll give you a stomach ache. Uh, similar with ores and oxides. And ores. Oxides are kind of more in between. Oxides aren't lovely to eat. You can use them on the skin, but I don't, I don't really recommend it. Same way with ores. Ores are kind of in that in between category while crystals are more semi or more semi. Um, cinnabar which is mercury sulfide is a toxic class crystal while um, arsenic sulfide is also a toxic class crystal. They are used in old, some old school medicines and they can be eaten. Um, you know, you're not going to die if you eat like a, like they use about half a gram or a quarter gram. I don't recommend you do use those unless you're very experienced and of course legally for the video I do not endorse the eating of any, <laughs> any of those things but um, just to you know, tell you that there are toxic class things of any of these. Similarly sulfur which is an earth is um, a toxic class thing again it can be used um, it can be used topically if you use in small doses it's just incredibly uh, yang Similarly, mercury is incredibly yin, arsenic is incredibly yang. Um, so again, they have to be mixed with the proper um, stuff. But anyway, a regular crystal like jade is semi-toxic. Um, you can crush up nephrite jade and use it. It's actually a very good tonic. Um, but of course, if you eat too much, it'll give you a stomach ache. You wouldn't want to use more than like half a gram or a gram or two grams uh, at any given time. So semi-toxics are oxides, crystals, ores, and birds. These are things, as I said, you can kind of eat them, but they will give you a stomachache. You usually use them in very small quantities, and you mix them with um, 
other herbs depending on their qualities like licorice root to take away heat for example or ginger to add heat if something's cold and that's why we refine things further into tincture form uh, tincture the tincture the the proper alcohol tincture that is made from a washed acetate, acetate that does not taste bad you'll have to try a tiny little bit of the tincture with your finger if it tastes like a terrible metallic terrible just astringent taste because we're trying to remove the astringency and what the alcohol does is actually adds a sweetness there's the old with the latin word dulce which the alchemists say you, know, you must make everything sweet that's how you uh, that's how you detoxify things so you make it sweet now minerals like lead will trick you lead is naturally sweet uh, so you have to know what you're doing if you ever use that to make your fruit tincture or else you know you'll, it'll taste sweet no matter what <laughs> again i do not endorse the eating of lead um, or anything else not etc uh, etc et disclaimer but um anyway that is the main to the main toxicology so anyway all right hello so this is the final little bit i hope you enjoyed that video and you found it informative and educational and you know, maybe try to do some of those experiments yourself if you have, feel comfortable usually i find at first you want to conquer the realm of vegetable alchemy and then you move on to mineral and of course if you want a book that explains the basics um, you can grab my alchemy basics book on amazon or if you want the pdf you can grab it on Gumroad here for 10 AUD, um, which is about eight American dollars. Anyway, otherwise, um, feel free to email me if you have any questions or you want to uh, you know, talk to me, or ask me about anything or whatever. Or otherwise, um, feel free to check the links down below. I've got products, services, etc. Gumroad, Fiverr, and otherwise, I hope you enjoyed. And goodbye.